It's now time for members' statements. The member for Brampton East. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Lynch mobs prowling the streets, thousands killed and thousands more displaced. Women subjected to unthinkable sexual violence, all under the direction of senior members of the Indian government. These are just some of the horrendous acts committed in India during the 1984 Sikh genocide. 34 years later, the Sikh community still awaits justice, while those involved in the justice, while, while those involved in the genocide still walk free. But hope prevails. In 2017, in an amazing act of unity, all parties came together in this assembly to recognize the horrific acts of 1984 as a genocide carried out by the Indian state. But in India, the lack of justice for the Sikh people has continued to allow the government to act with mm -hmm. impunity. Human Rights Watch has reported on the alarming increase of lynching mobs in India, this time targeting minorities throughout India, including Christians, Muslims, and Dalits, as well as journalists, human rights lawyers, and activists. A rise in lynchings described by the Washington Post as a crisis. Human Rights Watch reports further that much like in 1984, members of the Indian government are accused of encouraging this violence, including Prime Minister Modi's governing party, the BJP. Speaker, we must end impunity in India, starting by bringing justice to the victims of the 1984 Sikh genocide and continuing with the state violence that occurs today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member, member for Haldeman Norfolk. Speaker, during the Great War, Métis Henry Louis Norest was a famed Canadian sniper. In trench conflict, he needed excellent marksmanship with the ability to camouflage and stay still for long periods. Lance Corporal Norwest made 115 kills and earned two military medals. Norwest was killed by a German, also a sniper. A companion recalled, and I quote, our famous sniper, no doubt, understood better than most of the cost of life and the price of death. Henry Norwest carried out his terrible duty superbly because he believed a special kill, skill gave him no choice but to fulfill his indispensable mission. The current world record was made by an unnamed Canadian sniper in 2017 in Iraq, surpassing a record set by British sniper Craig Harrison in 09, who had edged Canadian Corporal Rob Furlong's 2002 shot in Afghanistan. Furlong unseated Canadian Master Corporal Aaron Perry. During this time of remembrance, I think of Canadian Private George Lawrence Price of World War I's 28th Battalion. On November 11, 1918, he was shot at 10.57 a.m., three minutes before the signing of the armistice. He was the last soldier of the British Empire of the Canadian forces to fall, again killed by a sniper. Thank you. Member Statements, Member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After years of stagnant wages and gaps in the laws that protect workers, a broad-based movement of Ontarians was finally able to convince the former Liberal government to act on improving working conditions in this province. In Davenport, where many of my constituents work two or three part-time jobs to make ends meet, and many more work contract to contract with no benefits or job security, these long overdue labour protections mean a real difference in their quality of life. Now, with Bill 47, the Conservative government is dragging Ontario backwards, rolling back the minimum wage, slashing paid sick and bereavement days, and weakening laws meant to create stability and security for workers. That stability doesn't just help the worker, Mr. Speaker, it benefits their whole family. Melanie Wilson, a teacher at Bloor Collegiate Institute in my riding, was interviewed recently on the impact of fairer labour laws on education outcomes for our kids, something this government professes to support. She said, when you have students coming to school exhausted, stressed, hungry and anxious because of the realities of living below the poverty line, their ability to learn, to read, to write, and to do math is really compromised. Mr. Speaker, when Ontario workers are paid fairly, have job security, and access to a union, our communities benefit, and so does our economy. 
On behalf of my community, I call on the Premier to halt this short-sighted attack on working people and start defending Ontarians whose hard work drives this province every single day. Thank you. Thank you. The member for Niagara West. Thank you, Speaker. I was Speaker. I was born in August of 1997 at the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital, one of the thousands of babies born there every year at the renowned obstetrics program that has been an integral part of the community's health care since the hospital was built in 1948. Earlier that year, in January of 97, the community rallied to ensure the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital was not shut down. Since before I was born, Speaker, the new build of the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital has been a top priority of the communities of Lincoln, West Lincoln and Grimsby. When it was first built, the West Lincoln serviced 8,000 individuals and families. Today, that number is closer to 130,000. The community has endured deep hurt from the Liberal government's cancellation of the planned rebuild in 2012. The recent decision of Hamilton Health Sciences to potentially remove services from the hospital has caused deep concern and disappointment in my riding and across Niagara. I'm so proud of Premier Doug Ford for coming to Niagara, hearing from local leadership about the importance of these services, and committing to work on a positive solution to the situation. I know our Minister of Health is doing everything she can through working with Hamilton Health Sciences to keep the services at West Lincoln my constituents deserve and expect. As I've said in this House before, I will not stop fighting for the West Lincoln Memorial Hospital until the doors open on a new build. Thank you to the thousands of community members who have come together to fight for our hospital. I hear you, and our, our government is on your side. <laughs> member Stevens, the member for Parkdale High Park. Thank you. Speaker, we are heading into flu season. People are going to get sick. Everyone at some point gets sick and will need time off work to not only take care of themselves and recover, but also to ensure they aren't exposing the public to infectious diseases, especially those experiencing serious illness. Paid sick days is an important component of public health. But just as we're heading into flu season, this government is cutting the two paid sick days that workers fought hard for. There is overwhelming support from people across this province for paid sick days. By taking away the two paid sick days, people will now have to choose between getting paid and getting well. Parents won't be able to stay home to look after their sick child. Workers will be forced to work while they are sick. All because this government thinks two paid sick days is too much to expect. This government is also bringing back sick notes, which even doctors themselves have said is unnecessary and bureaucratic. Those who are sick should be staying at home and resting, not visiting doctors' offices and hospitals for sick notes, and putting unnecessary pressure on our already burdened health care system. This is not how you end hallway medicine. Paid sick days save the health care system money. This government's decision is not based on evidence and is certainly not based on the best interest of the hardworking people of this province. By taking away the two paid sick days, this government is putting public health at risk. And for what? Just to increase the profits of their big business friends. Speaker, the Ford government is not making Ontario open for business. They're making Ontario open for sickness. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> member statements. The member for Guelph. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm honoured to rise today to recognize one of the most vital organizations in my community. Since 1977, Guelph Wellington Women in Crisis has played an essential role in helping vulnerable women and making Guelph a caring community. There are many programs, the shelter, the sexual assault centre, the transition and housing support program, the Rural Women Support Program, the Family Court Support Program, and their newest program to combat trafficking deserve our support. Under the inspiring leadership of their Executive Director, Sly Castaldi, GWWIC provides a continuum of services like no other in Ontario. They provide vital services to approximately 1,500 women every year and respond to 3,000 calls a year. Mr. Speaker, their 28 shelter bed is full. The demand for their services grow, and women deserve support now. So that's why I'm so concerned that some of the organization that provides services to address violence against women 
funded by the Ministry of the Attorney General have not received funding for 2018. So I'm eager to work with the government to make sure that vital organizations are properly funded because violence against women should be a nonpartisan issue. I want to thank GWWIC for the vital services you provide for women in our community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Durham. Thank you, Speaker. On October 20th, the municipality of Clarington celebrated the achievements of several local sports heroes. I rise today to highlight the newest inductees to the Clarington Sports Hall of Fame. Steve Brinkman is an accomplished volleyball player who competed in more than 300 international matches and has made a huge contribution to Team Canada as an athlete and a mentor. Angela Feist holds the title of Kiyoshi Seven Dan Black Belt in Martial Arts. She has been a world champion multiple times and coach for Team Canada. She's also started a martial arts program for children with special needs at Grandview Children's Centre. Sam Norwood, for 25 years, has been a champion for community baseball in Clarington. His dedicated leadership has propelled the sport forward and greatly improved access for Clarington children. Nan Spencer's pioneering work for girls hockey in Clarington helped Bowmanville get selected to host the Women's Senior Provincial Championships for the first time. Many who played in those championships went on to represent Canada at the first Women's World Hockey Tournament and first Olympic women's hockey team. Lastly, the Kendall Eagles uh, of 1976, uh, their senior baseball team, won the provincial championship and the entire team uh, was inducted. Congratulations to all the new inductees into the Clarington Sports Hall of Fame. I am very proud as your Durham MPP. Thank you, Speaker. Member statements. The member for Temiskaming Cochrane. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, today is uh, Halloween and close to remember today. My poppy almost came off. Um, but I'm here to talk about a new a season that's soon to be starting, and that is the start of something near and dear to many people in Northern Ontario, snowmobile season. Yes. We know we, when we start, seeing, we start seeing the snowflakes, and snowmobiling is a big deal in a lot of places. It's a huge deal in my part of the world, and I'd like to thank some of the volunteers on the many snowmobile clubs in my area who maintain the trails who work hard. I hope I don't miss any. I've got the West Nipissing Snowmobile Club. I've got the Golden, De Golden Corridor Snow Drifters, Club Echo, the Jack Pine Snowmobile Club, the Tritown Snow Travelers, and the Polar Bear Riders up in Cochrane. And on behalf of those people, on behalf of the restaurant owners, the hotel motel owners, I would like to welcome everyone from across Ontario to come to not only to Miskaming Cochrane, but co to come to beautiful Northern Ontario to experience our trails. You will see places that the only way to see them is on a snowmobile. The only way to see parts of, of this great province. They do a great job. The trails are very well kept. They're very environmentally conscious how they do it. I remember when I started snowmobiling, I had a 1976 Skidoo land. It was broke more often than it actually ran. It belched fuel and oil. My 600 Renegade is perfect, and I am ask you to come to Northern Ontario and grow, enjoy a great province. Thank you. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Glengarry, Prescott, Russell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this weekend I attended the uh, Fra uh, Fra Francophonie of Ontario conference. There are more than 350 representatives from all throughout the province. It was an excellent uh, group of uh, Franco-Ontarians in the areas of education, health, justice, community services, and youth. It was an innovative weekend. A new board of directors was elected, and I would like to take this opportunity to thank the re-elected president, Carole Jalin, and the new members of the board, Claudette Gleason, Eric Marcotte, Julien Jérémy, Marie-France Palquette, and Alex Brequin. Ontario has the privilege of being able to count on a strong, active, and uh, deeply rooted francophone community. 
I would like to thank this organization and its members for all the work they've done over the last year and for the essential role that they play in the Francophone community. Thank you very much. Member statements? Member statements? The member for Niagara West will need unanimous consent if he seeks to do another statement. The second statement. Member for Niagara West is seeking unanimous consent of the House to do a second statement. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Member for Niagara West. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, this is to be uh, done to the tune of Monster Mash. In the corner office, we heard Kathleen say, we need more money, let's make them pay. Glenn said, there's no problem, there's a law we can pass. We'll drive up the price on a tank of gas. They, they did, did the, the tax. tax. They did the carbon tax. They, they did, did the tax. tax. They wanted all of your cash. They, they did, did the tax. tax. We wouldn't have any stash. They, they did, did the tax. tax. They did the carbon tax. Uh, then Doug and his team saw through Kathleen's uh, scheme and said no more money from the people you'll bleed. The people agreed and they armed for the fight and sent the libs packing on election night. We stopped the tax. We stopped the carbon tax. We stopped the tax. We stopped the carbon tax. We stopped the tax. You'll keep more of your cash. We stopped the tax. We're open for business, so relax. The Liberals were having such great fun, the party with the taxpayers' money had begun, when Premier Ford and the Conservatives stopped the carbon tax. We stopped the tax. We stopped the carbon tax. We stopped the tax. They wanted to take from your stash. We stopped the tax. You'll keep more of your cash. We stopped the tax. We stopped the carbon tax. Reports by committees.